My name is Darren Walkie, and I'm the business director for the Cereal Protein and Cellulose Program, otherwise known as CP Squared. Today I'm going to talk about one of our key technologies, our nano encapsulations, and how we're taking it to commercialization. So from the bench top to uh, the marketplace, hopefully. Uh, our program is four years old. It's part of the Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutritional Sciences at the University of Alberta, and it's headed by Dr. Ling Win Chen. Uh, the focus of our program is to take uh, two raw materials, primarily barley protein and wood pulp cellulose, and turn them into value-added technologies. Uh, so our mission is to take to find competitive advantages for these raw materials and make them marketable in the world market. So we compete with other uh, raw proteins in the marketplace, such as whey protein, soy, synthetics, and other ingredients. Uh, the goals of our program are to expand the basic knowledge of these materials uh, so we can understand them more, customize them more, and develop them further. Uh, we all also have our, our second goal is to develop uh, partnerships with industry. Uh, we found that academic research sitting on the shelf doesn't do a lot of good. So we approach industry to take our ideas and our technologies to get it into the hands of the people that can use it. Uh, this, we find that this benefits producers, so the crop growers, this benefits the technology utilizers, so the people that are utilizing the technology, the end consumers, and of course along the way it benefits us because our technology is being utilized. And we also utilize, uh, our other goal is to develop direct connections with our industry partners for the purpose of developing uh, relationships where we can address their problems or their issues, uh, meet their needs, and in, in return make our program much more sustainable. So here we take our proteins and we take our cellulose. We use a polymer physics and chemistry approach to change them into everything from micro nano encapsulations to emulsions to films to gels. Uh, just about everything across the board. Uh, I'll focus on our nano and micro encapsulations. Uh, these are about 1.5 to 2 years from commercialization at this stage. Uh, we still have to do a little bit of testing in terms of in vivo testing and animal testing for some of the industries we're involved in. Other industries it's just ready to customize. Uh, we can make uh, micro encapsulations on a scale of 1 to 5 microns and we can make nano encapsulations from 30 to 200 nanometers. Uh, we can encapsulate a wide range of ingredients. The technology is designed specifically for lipid soluble ingredients. Uh, so anything that is a lipid or can be soluble in a lipid, the technology will work with. But it also works uh, to a certain degree with water soluble ingredients such as vitamin B12. They have a high loading capacity. Uh, they can protect against everything from oxygen to harsh pH to light. Uh, they're also good at temp uh, taste, odor, and flavor masking, or color masking. So if you want to take something like fish oil, which has a very strong odor and taste that most consumers find objectionable, you can encapsulate it with our technology and put it directly in a product and they won't even know it's there. Uh, they can increase uh, storage capacity. They can be used in a variety of forms, such as semi-liquid, liquid, solid as well. They're controlled release. They'll release within the small intestine opposed to the stomach. Uh, in our in vitro test, we found there's a 20% loss in the stomach as the microcapsules break down into nanocapsules. So on the top, you can see uh, the microcapsules, and on the bottom, in the pink solution is the nano encapsulations. And D shows you uh, the internal structure of what it would look like if you cut uh, an encapsulation in half. All of our technologies are cost effective. They fit with the industry's current processes so they can be scaled up easily. Uh, so what we found in terms of our technology transfer, the challenges that we found right off the bat was finding an industry partner who's interested in the technology or more likely needs, has a need for the technology. Uh, so in finding this, we have to find the right people at the right time. Uh, and that's a difficult case if you're looking at a multinational company who has several hundred employees and several hundred decision makers. And they may not need the technology at the time you approach. Uh, we also found uh, resistance in sharing ideas or, or identifying weaknesses within a company. Uh, if companies think you're talking to their competitors, they don't want you to know their weaknesses or what they're looking for. And also companies tend to have a, a regimented evaluation process. They have slightly different procedures than the way the uh, university traditionally operates. 
Uh, we've also had problems in terms of, of sample production. Uh, some of our companies have come and said, we want 10 kilograms of your sample, and we're only prepared at this stage to give 100 grams. So there's a little bit of a negotiation back and forth. Uh, in terms of quantity of the samples, as I said, or the availability of our staff. Uh, we're relatively, we're a growing research program. We have 13 in our program at the moment, and we're expanding slowly. And we also have issues around confidentiality and IP licensing. We don't want to share the secret stars, our, our technology, without knowing that we have uh, some security on the other end. Uh, other challenges we face are in terms, of in terms of sustainability. Right now our program is primarily based on grants. Grants have a lifespan, uh, they tend to run out after a period of time, and you always have to find new grants. So what we're trying to do is balance the needs of the program and the needs of the university with the needs of industry to make our, our program more sustainable by bringing in industry development and industry dollars. So we have a balance between feasibility and applied research. Uh, we're looking at ways of ensuring continued investments. We want to be around for a while. The other issue we're facing is in terms of regulatory. Our technology is being based on barley protein containing gluten. So with a 1% po percentage of the population allergic to gluten, uh, it's kind of an issue in terms of what type of, of products you're utilizing. And to a certain degree, we use nanotechnology, so we're subject to the same regulatory issues as most nano products are. Uh, how we've overcome these challenges, uh, first we sat down and identified potential applications for each of our technologies in a variety of industries that we were interested in. Uh, so starting with the food industry, we looked at it as being a delivery system for bioactive ingredients such as Megos oils, vitamins, that type of thing. In the confectionery industry, um, chocolate is always a good example because a lot of people really enjoy chocolate. So our, ours can mask the flavor of bitter cocoa. You can increase the amount within a product and make it healthier. Uh, you can add antioxidants, you can add antimicrobials into a product and make the shelf life uh, either healthier or, or last longer. Another natural fit for a delivery system is pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. And natural health products is a delivery system, uh, both oral and topical applications. Another fit we found was personal care. So everything from sunscreens to shampoos to conditioners, our technology will fit. And of course, animal health. So again, topical and oral delivery systems for drugs. Uh, here's an example of, of a visual example of what we do with our other technology. So our films fit with wound care uh, into food as well, our microencapsulations with food, our emulsions in personal care, our films into packaging, that type of thing. So continuing on, we also look at attracting the attention of, of companies. So how did we go about doing this? The first thing we did was uh, we created a program brand that was recognizable. And the long name of our program is the Cereal Protein and Cellulose Program. Breaks down into CP, CP, eventually gets into CP squared. It's a catchy, memorable way of, of grabbing people's attention and, and making them remember who we are. Uh, we developed an entire suite of of program information. We developed an overview summary which provides information on the expertise, our platform technologies. Uh, we developed a website. We have a quarterly newsletter that provides highlights on our technology, our program, where we're going, and what we're doing. Uh, we promoted a list of potential applications to the industry. We take that with us when we go to knock on industry's door. Uh, we identified the unique characteristics of each of the raw materials we're utilizing. So we take that and say, this is what our technology can do for you. This is how it fits with what we see your technology is doing. And this is the unique benefit that it can gain. Uh, we do our best to educate our potential clients and industry partners. Uh, it takes a little while to educate them on what our technology can do, the benefits of it, and the potential applications of where we see it as being a fit. Uh, we've also considered a variety of collaboration types. We'll work with industry in just about any, any way they want. Uh, we ideally want open two-way collaborations and partnerships, so the sharing of information, ideas, evaluations, problems, that type of thing. Uh, we'll do analytical and sample analysis for not only our technologies, we'll do it for other proteins. And we develop relationships with suppliers, so different ingredients that we can encapsulate and put into other ingredients, such as probiotics or other or enzymes or things like that. Uh, in connecting with industry, we actively produce, pursue our industry clients. In fact, we've knocked on over a thousand industry doors and we've had a fairly good return on that. Uh, we've connected, in this case, yeah, this, this, this information is slightly out of date. We've, we've gone a long way before that. 
Uh, we've also developed our news, newsletters, conferences, symposiums. We attend them all. We have a website. Uh, we also build network and contacts. Uh, we offer customized solutions with our technology. All of our technologies are platforms that can be customized to a wide variety of industries. Uh, we offer exclusivity and confidentiality. If a company approaches us, they're interested in the platform and they want it for a specific industry, we'll look at signing an exclusivity agreement with them. And we encourage industry to visit us. Uh, we have a confidential open door policy, so as soon as we have a confidentiality agreement in place, you're more than welcome to visit us and see our facilities and meet our staff. Uh, what we offer in terms of our collaboration is we offer open, uh, open ongoing access to cutting edge research. Uh, we can customize it to meet your specific needs, direct access to the next innovations, uh, direct access to our equipment and our facilities. We're currently building a pilot facility that will be in operation next year, which will have the capability of not only producing barley protein, but our technologies as well. Uh, we provide access to our unique and growing network of everything from funding agencies to government to industry personnel. Uh, we have the ability, in most cases, to leverage project funding, uh, which alleviates the cost of our industry project partners. And we offer direct access to intellectual property, mostly our own, uh, in some cases some of our industry partners, depending on their relationships. And we offer an alternative to internal research projects. Uh, the current status of our, our technologies right now is they are IP protected. Uh, we have two patents currently pending on our encapsulation technology. Uh, we've received a significant amount of interest, but uh, the main points it boils down to seven multinational ingredient supply companies are interested in the technology. One is strongly interested in pursuing a collaborative pro uh, partnership that will result in a licensing agreement. Six have requested samples for uh, evaluation in every industry from food to natural products to personal care. And we have one multinational in the personal care industry that is, is strongly considering moving our technology into commercialization. Our technology, this one is ready for scale up and customization. And we'll be starting the regulatory approval process for both nanotechnology as well as in vitro and in vivo. And that's the summary of it. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Uh, we're currently working with 35 under confidentiality agreements. Yes? Can you expand a little on, on how you deal with the IP? Um, our IP, because we're university, is run through Tech Edmonton, so they handle the IP for us. Um, uh, being connected with the inventor, we do have a say over which companies we can connect. When we deal with companies, we can offer them a licensing agreement, uh, but it's primarily dealt after we do the sample evaluations. Yeah.